Hi everybody, I'm Scott, and today I want to talk about this box. It's a Klipsu? Klipsu? Klipsa? I don't know. It's an outdoor enclosure for like electronics and stuff. Well, pretty much whatever you want to put in it. And I am going to be putting into it a computer. And that has to has a tie-in with another project that's coming up eventually. And this is basically going to be an outdoor router with a uh, wired connection for some other devices that are going to be hooked up to it and a wireless connection to get the internet from my house, which I could also wire, but I felt like doing it wirelessly um, just for the hell of it. In fact, this is really rather unnecessary, but I do want to test out the enclosure and I figured this is a good way to do it. So what is this? Well, it, it's a box, that's for sure. It's got two latches on the side and when you open it up it has some mounting hardware and this board inside kind of ungainly um as usual this video is not sponsored by this company or product i don't even know if that's the name of the company or the product to be honest but they didn't sponsor it my wallet sponsored this project as usual in this video so this board here gets mounted into this case and whatever you want to mount in the case gets mounted to this board. It's actually a very cool arrangement because it makes it really easy to mount stuff because you can just do it on your tabletop or desktop or workbench. And then uh, when, you, when it's all done and wired up and everything's set the way you want it, you just pop it in here, four screws, one in each corner, and then uh, you're good to go. I'll show you that later, of course, when I mount everything. So there's not much else to show about this. It is just a box. The one curiosity is there's a tiny hole right there. That hole didn't come with the box. I was so impressed by this because it is so airtight that when I received it, it was the interior was under vacuum and I couldn't physically pry it open. Like I tried, I didn't want to damage it, so I, but I tried like putting like screwdrivers in here and torquing it and trying to pop it open it wouldn't budge and the, the front and back were a little bit collapsed inwards. And this is some stiff plastics. That's a lot of force. And when I drilled that hole, it sucked in air for a good 30 seconds. So this thing was under a decent amount of vacuum and it uh, held that for quite a while, I guess, because I don't know how long it took to ship here. And I'm guessing it was like that from the factory. It's probably it was hot in the factory. And then when it was brought into my air conditioned house, particularly it cooled down. And so the pressure became negative with comparison to the um, to the ambient pressure. But very impressed that it held the vacuum for as long as it did, which was at least a week, I guess. Probably way more. So anyway, enough about the enclosure because I'm going to show that towards the end of this video when I actually mount this thing. Uh, for now, I want to talk about the computer itself and what's going to go on this, this cheese board. It looks like a breadboard, but it's not. It has no circuitry in it whatsoever and as for the computer well it is quite importantly nothing fancy i have a wireless card for the computer an ssd a cable for such an ssd and this motherboard with cpu now this is an atom motherboard and honestly, this thing is pretty old. It's from 2012, so it's about nine years old. And uh, it does take DDR3 RAM. It's, I don't even know what version of Atom it is. It runs dog slow. I mean, this is a really slow machine. But it is a machine, and it is one I'm willing to sacrifice by putting it in an enclosure outdoors that's uh, as of yet untested by me. So it's, uh, it's sacrificable is what I'm saying, but it does function. Now, the other benefit of it being an Atom processor is, of course, the very low power consumption. Obviously there is no fan. There's just the heat sink and it doesn't put out that much heat. It's very low power um, because this thing is gonna be fully enclosed. There can be no ventilation to the outside. And to go along with that, I don't. I have a power supply. It's a 300 watt uh, Flex Guru brand, brand I'm not familiar with, but apparently it does work because I did test it out already. And it's uh, fairly small as you can see fits in the palm of my hand, much smaller than your average uh, ATX style power supply. 
though it does have the connectors for this motherboard and for most any motherboard out there. It has a fan, but the fan, when I tested it out with this motherboard, didn't actually turn on, like just under normal like idle load. So that's really good. It's also uh, 80 plus gold rated, so it's pretty efficient. So this thing shouldn't get too hot either. So between this and this motherboard, I think we're safe putting it in a sealed enclosure. But that's also part of what I want to test here. Uh, as for this um, wireless card, this is really more of a demonstration piece than anything because when I plug this into the board, it just it won't boot. Like, it won't even post. And I think that might be because this card is so old, it might be like 5-volt PCI, and this thing's like 3.3-volt PCI. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I could be talking out my ass, but anyway, this card just could just be faulty. There could be something shorted inside of it. But just to demonstrate, I have another one on order that should work with this board. And uh, ultimately, I took the mounting bracket off of it, and it's just going to sit in the PCI slot. Like so. And provide wireless access for this computer. It does have a built-in Ethernet port which is then going to provide access for other devices that are going to use this as a router. Now that begs the question of how am I supposed to mount this stuff to this board? This board is quite literally just squares and they're tapered so they're smaller on the back than they are on the front. And to be honest, I don't know the correct way of mounting stuff to this board. I'm sure there's like some hardware you're supposed to use, but hell, I'm here to improvise something and, uh, and just get this working. So. I'm going to try three different mounting methods, um, both because they're the most sensible for the objects at hand and because I want to see how they hold up, respectively. Um, one is the motherboard is going to be attached by screws. I have these fairly thick threaded screws, and I'm hoping that if I just drive them in, I mean, they will definitely get driven in by a drill and will stay there, and I'll just put them in in each of the corners of the motherboard. And... Um, I don't see why that wouldn't hold the motherboard in place quite nicely. As for the power supply, well, that doesn't have mounting hardware for this application, so I'm going to zip tie the power supply to the board, just with two zip ties wrapping around it like this. Now, these zip ties in of themselves won't fit through the board, so I'm going to have to drill out a couple of holes, well, four holes, to be precise, to fit the zip ties which kind of, um, you know, defeats four holes on this board for future use for screws, but I'm okay with that. And then finally, of course, we have to mount the SSD, and I'm going to go the very simple route, which I've used before in other computer cases and stuff, and just use Velcro. Uh, for example, I have a server that has uh, 12 disks in RAID 6, and there's no room for an SSD in that case in addition to the 12 disks, so I just uh, Velcro the disks, the boot disks, to the uh, interior of the case and it works fine i mean they don't go anywhere it's not like the case is bouncing around and it's going to come loose and same with this this is just going to sit in the wall and um this is extremely light it's a very cheap ssd again going with cheap parts here because i mean this psu is probably the most expensive thing but even that wasn't that expensive now ultimately i am going to have to bring network in and out of here so this is what i bought it is a pre-terminated uh, thing with a cable gland on it so basically this would go through the end of the enclosure and then you would plug an ethernet cable into the inside of this if i unscrew this there's an ethernet jack inside which is just so this is just basically like a little patch cable with a male and female end and then once it's all screwed together you put another ethernet cable through this gland plug it into there and then cap it off and it should be fairly watertight I'm not going to be installing that today because I don't yet need that extra hole in the case. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to proceed with the rest of the project, so I don't want to commit to drilling an extra hole in the case. I do, however, need a hole in the case for the power. And for the power, I'm just going to use a standard... This is like a 10-footer um, power cable with a C14 connector on one end and a NEMA 515 on the other end. And actually, I'm going to have to chop one of these off in order to fit it through the cable gland that is going to ultimately go into the enclosure. So I'm going to end up cutting off the plug end because, because, uh, oh, there it is, because I have this right angle connector, which will be perfect for going into the outlet that's on the outside of my house that has a protective box over it. You'll see what I mean later. So a right angle connector is perfect for that. 
cord comes in here. So I'm gonna chop off the plug end of this cord, feed it through the cable gland, and then this end will obviously plug into the power supply. Uh, just to be clear on close up, this is what I'm talking about, standard sort of computer and electronic equipment power cable. And here I have a selection of cable glands and I'll just find the best fitting one for this diameter cable. So first up, I wanna get started by just arranging things in a logical fashion. Now I wanna be able to access the ports on this board. So I don't want the ports to be right up against the side of the case in case it doesn't power up or something. And I just wanna plug a monitor and keyboard into it. It's not something I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be doing on a regular basis, but for troubleshooting, it would be very valuable. Now, as you can see, if I bring it all the way up to the corner, there's no holes there. So I'm thinking if I bring this to the middle, like so, put the SSD up top, where I could just be Velcroed on, I can go up to the very tip top of the uh, thing, because I don't need holes for it. And then put the power supply at the very bottom. And we got enough room for everything. So as far as spacing goes, I want to keep the power supply as far to the bottom as possible, since I'm going to need holes to tap into to put the zip ties. Uh, we will put it right at the bottom row of holes, thusly. And then I'll drill out two holes here and two holes on the other side, which I will mark right now. And I just want to keep enough room on this end because this is where the plug has to go. Oh, actually, this brings up an interesting question. If the cable gland is coming up over here, it'll hit the power supply and I won't be able to route the cable in properly. So I want the cable gland to be on the side of the power supply where I drilled that hole. So I got the thing and the hole I drilled is here. And so if the board is picked up and put in like this, then I actually need the this side. I actually need this side to be free for that hole. So yeah, let me get started by potentially ruining this board. I'll mark off the holes I'm gonna drill out for the zip tie. Do one there, there. So these four marks are where I'm gonna drill out for the zip ties. Just get the motherboard out of the way. And to avoid drilling into my table, I am just gonna hold it by hand and hope I don't drill into my hand. Let me do this in a way that you can kind of see what I'm doing, even though it's literally just drilling holes in plastic. Wonderful. This, uh, this stuff actually drills very well. It makes the holes uh, pretty clean. See a little bit of burring on the back, but nothing uh, too significant. So there we have our four holes and uh, no problem at all getting a zip tie in there. So I shall mount the power supply thusly. And there we go. And I want to keep the cables as flat as possible to the top of this thing. In fact, this cable isn't needed, so I'm just going to double that one back over itself. And that's just going to hang out like that. Uh, the rest of these cables are, in fact, needed, so that's fine. And then as I tighten the zip ties, I'll ensure the cables are nice and flat underneath them. Okay, with a bit of uh, struggling, I got it on there. And... Uh, yeah, it doesn't really want to budge, so that seems like a successful mounting to me. And then just cut them nice and flush with a pair of snips. Lovely. Okay, now as for the motherboard, like I said, I want to orient it this way. And when I screw it down, I don't want to press down too hard and torque it, because, of course, it also has all these... Um, solder pads and everything and it's not perfectly flat on the bottom so if i were to tighten it down as much as possible with my drill it would actually cause the board to bend on the corners so i just want to very loosely sort of tack it into place because it's just going to hang off the screws it doesn't have to actually be firmly pushed pulled or pushed down onto the board now i'm just checking unfortunately it doesn't look like i have perfect alignment 
So I'm actually going to select a different screw because these are a little big and they're just about the same size as the hole. So I want something smaller so I have a little bit of wiggle room to get the board into place. I didn't have anything perfect. I thought I had a bunch of machine screws, but I guess not. Um, these, unfortunately, are not pan head screws like the others. The problem is I can't go too long. I have thinner screws that are longer, but if they're too long, they'll hit the back of the case. So even though these are not quite the right screws for the job, I'm going to give them a shot anyway. So no time like the present. Get this lined up with one of the holes. And just loosely attach it in there. And that corner doesn't quite want to line up, but this corner is a bit better aligned. Okay, and then I'm just going to finish them off by hand and just sort of make sure the board's not flexing underneath them as I just screw them in and out a bit. So I want them just to the point where the board's not flexing down at all. Okay, and you'll notice I didn't get a screw in this corner, and that's just because there, it just wouldn't line up with one of the holes in the uh, cheese board or whatever you want to call it. But I think that'll be just fine. Because this board isn't that heavy, and it's just going to be hanging off those screws. So I think we'll be okay with that. And as it turns out, these screws were quite a nice length because they just barely stick out the back, but they definitely won't interfere with uh, mounting this on the back plane. What might interfere, now that I look at it, are these zip ties, because I think these ribs are supposed to hit, sit flush on the back, and then uh, these zip ties are going to prevent that. So what we can do is nibble out a little bit of this plastic right around those zip ties and let those zip ties sit flush. Is any of this the manufacturer's recommended method of installation? Oh, surely not. But I'm sort of just bullshitting here and just uh, figuring things out as I go along with what I have at hand. So not the neatest thing in the world, but it ended up creating a nice V groove. And now that I actually took some strain off the cable, let's make sure the zip ties are still pretty tight. Yes, they are. So this board's still not going anywhere. Now for probably the easiest and least controversial mounting method, which is this SSD. Now, just as a tip, if you're going to use Velcro to mount SSDs, put the Velcro on the top, because especially this, like, I have this industrial strength Velcro, which has a really strong adhesive. Sometimes it just does not want to come off, at least not without breaking something underneath it. Now, if you put it on the bottom, then you can't ever mount this flush with screws to something later on. But if you put it on the top, it's fine. Now, of course, this can act as a heat shield rather than a heat sink, so it might not be desirable with a high-performance SSD, this is not a high-performance SSD, nor will it, be, will it be used in a high-performance sort of situation. But I am going to put the Velcro on the top. And also, usually the specifications are on the bottom, and um, leaving those uncovered, I guess, is desirable in some cases. And I always have a tendency to stick the soft half of the Velcro onto the device itself and the um, rough half, I guess you could call it, the part with the hooks onto the mounting surface. When I say hook and loop, I mean, when I, when I say hook, it's hook and loop is the uh, style of, of adhesive. Adhesive? No, it's connector. I don't know what you'd call this, actually. I don't know why I took that off first. I wasn't paying attention. What I meant to do was this. And the way to always get your Velcro to line up is by Velcroing it on first and then just leave the adhesive and then you can stick it wherever you want it. And I am going to stick it right about there. And then just work it in, make sure the adhesive sticks. And I usually like to pull it off to make sure that the, adhe that the adhesive really stuck to the other surface. And if you wiggle it on, it usually uh, helps it Velcro on better, for lack of a more improved term. So anyway, there it is. There's most of our computer assembly, minus the um, 
wireless card that we'll eventually get here. But there we have it. And I'll probably zip tie all these together. Just keep them a little bit neat. Although neatness is not key in this application because no one is really ever going to see it. That's the whole idea. So there we go. We have a computer on the board. Oh wait, we don't have a computer on the board yet. Or at least we do, but without a disk. And I'll probably... I mean, for EMI purposes, it's not ideal, I guess, to put a SATA cable right up next to the power supply cable, but I don't think it's actually going to be a problem in real life. It's probably, you know, it goes against best practice, but I'm okay with it. I like to mix up my zip tie colors whenever possible, and I like uh, nice bright zip ties. There we go. Got those cables sort of uh, bonded together. And then I think these tiny little zip ties are going to be able to go through the holes in the board. Let's see. Oh yeah. Perfect. And then the idea here is just to loosely tack this cable up here out of the way of the power connector so that the main incoming power cable there we go, brighten that image up a little bit. Um, so the incoming power connector is uh, unencumbered. And again, not uh, tying in tightly. Let it, let it stay a little loose, let it breathe. And then likewise, up here by the SSD, I'm going to put another zip tie just to tack this down. Just to keep everything in place. And there we go, wonderful. So now it should be a board that's ready to boot. And uh, it already has RAM in it, of course. And I actually sort of hooked up a power LED and a hard drive LED that are just LEDs soldered onto these little sockets. And this way we can keep an eye on it when the, uh, when the case is open. I did consider putting LEDs on the outside of the enclosure, which I thought would look cool, but um, when you're looking for a waterproof enclosure, or when you're looking to have a waterproof enclosure, the last thing you want to do is put excess holes in it that don't really serve a purpose. And I don't really need to see the power or LED. I would monitor this using um, using my own monitoring software from inside the house that's monitoring whether it's actually connected to the network or not. That's the important part. If it's not, then I can go outside and open the box and troubleshoot it, and then I can check if the power LED is on or not. So, you know, I think for a... Uh, just for the sake of water and air tightness. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it there. And we'll never be completely airtight again, but as tight as possible. All right, so now that that's done and dusted, let me work on getting the power into the main box itself. Here's the hole that I drilled. Very hard to see, it's a tiny little hole. Um, I'm just gonna enlarge that in order to fill, fit the appropriate cable gland. But before I do that, I gotta select the cable gland. So selecting the right cable gland isn't really a scientific process. I mean, it is if you accurately know the dimensions of your cable, but I do not. So what you want to do is find a cable gland that the cable will slide into smoothly and as tightly as possible while still getting it to move so that when you screw it down, then it becomes tight. And you want to make sure that when you screw it down all the way, you really can't pull it off the cable gland with ease. Now these kind are not the locking kind that like grip into the cables. These will move a little bit, but as long as it locks down and requires a lot of force to move, then you got the right size. So now that we have our cable gland, the next step is getting our drill bit. And I'm going to use step bits. And of course, just find one that has a step that matches the dimensions of the threads, of the cable gland. This one will work just fine. I already kind of have a pilot hole in place, or at least I know where it's going to go. Um, it might be a little too small to guide the bit properly, but we'll see. And then as I get close to which step I think it is, just check my progress. Of course, you could measure in advance, but you know, what fun is that? One more step should do the trick. 
and that should work. Now, one of the things is the steps are actually thinner than, than the thickness of the wall of the case. So you can see it's not quite all the way through yet. You can see there's a little lip there. So I'm going to have to open this up and go in from the other side and just finish it out. And of course, going nice and slow so that I don't accidentally blast through the next step. And this next step is fairly simple. It comes with a rubber gasket or rubber eyes gasket. And then this goes in here. And then this nut goes on here. These plastic ones, you probably don't need pliers because you don't want to strip the threads. Um, in fact, that's tight enough. I think uh, it's more than sufficient. It's probably hard to see in the shot, but the uh, washer is actually compressed. So that is just fine. And then the next step is just to, since I'm going from the... Uh, From one end to the other, I gotta slide this entire thing through, all 10 feet of it. And there we go. I'm gonna leave a decent amount of slack in here because this is gonna have to contort a little bit to get into that power supply. So I'm gonna leave about a foot of extra cable inside the enclosure. It can always be adjusted later on by just uh, loosening the cable gland and then moving it around. But you know the cable gland's good when you can pick up the enclosure by it, then it should be fine. And, uh, ooh, let me get all this swarf off of my bench, or at least out of the way. All right, this enclosure is actually kind of cumbersome on the bench. This is the mounting hardware that this thing came with. It comes with some brackets and screws, which I'll show you later, to actually attach this to the side of, well, whatever you're attaching it to, in this case, my house. And then it also comes with a set of screws for attaching our friend the uh, base plate onto the inside of this thing. So let's hope this fits nicely. Yeah, it looks good enough. I and mean, we have tons of vertical clearance. I think you could see here basically... Uh, the tallest part is this cable loop and that doesn't even get close to hitting the lid so that's great and then with my drill on a low torque setting i'm just going to screw in each corner and there we go screwed in oh last step is to route this plug into the power supply i'm glad it, glad i left it a little long because it really has to kind of as i said contort to get into the ideal position to plug in there but there you go it's a nice little loop so here we have it the vertical outdoor mountable computer um next step i guess is just to turn it on and see if it works oh no next step is to add a plug to the end of this thing so that i can actually plug it in if you're one of those people who forgets to put the cable through the fitting first well i gotta tell you something so does everyone else from time to time this time i got lucky and i remembered and there we go one plug very nice. And now let's see if this thing boots. All right, I got my capture device all set up and ready to go. So plug this in. Let's hope the plug works. And ah, it seems to work because we got uh, green and red LEDs going on there. And uh, let's see what's going on in the capture device. Hey, there we go. CentOS Linux. It's an old version of CentOS because it's an old motherboard. And I didn't really want to mess around worrying about uh, driver compatibility and like whether it's compatible with the chipset or what have you and hunting down older drivers. So I just had a feeling this would work. Oh, one thing I should point out is that this turned on immediately when I plugged it in because I set it up in BIOS to always power on when it receives power from the power supply. So it's nothing magical. I didn't do anything hardware wise to get it to do that. That's just what it does. And I think that's the ideal BIOS setting for a situation like this, because if the power were to go out, like during a blackout or what have you, I would want the motherboard to come back on um, and continue doing whatever it was doing before. When the power comes back on, I wouldn't want to have to go out there and hit a power switch or somehow manually intervene by turning this on. 
So as long as power comes in through the power cord, this computer will turn on by itself. All right, so as you can see, the computer boots and uh, I can get into Linux. Great, uh, that's really all I need to know for now. Next step is to mount this on the side of the house, power it up with a uh, Wi-Fi card in it, and make sure we can get to it from the network. The first step, of course, is to attach the mounting brackets to the back of the case, and those just go in with one screw apiece. The screws do not penetrate to the inside of the case. That would be kind of silly. And I'm going to attach all four mounting brackets, even though I'm only going to use two of them, as you'll see, to attach it on the top. And that's because the way the siding laid out, I didn't want to put a screw through the very center of a strip of siding. I wanted to keep them tucked under a lip. And I never discussed the dimensions of this thing, but there is the Dimensi on. Yeah. So here's about where I'm going to place the box. And as you can see, those top two fasteners are just like right under the lip of the siding. So that'll keep water out of the siding when it's penetrated by screws. And in case you're wondering why there's a shower cap in my pocket, it's because it was drizzling on and off. And uh, I didn't want the camera to get wet. So, uh, yeah, that explains that. And there's the final screw. And it is mounted. Next step, of course, is plugging it in. And that is a GFCI protected outlet. And once I figure out how to plug it in, there I go, I will close it up. And you can see that right angle plug fits perfectly in that box with the cover on. And there's the final installation. Obviously, the cable was far too long, but I coiled it up and attached it to that thing that sticks out of the side of my house. And it is uh, better too long than too short because I can always move the box in the future. But there it should stay for quite a while. And not 30 minutes after I installed it, it started pouring rain outside, which is great because that will give a good test for the box. And you can see it getting nicely soaked there. And here's the very next day. It was way too humid also to open up the box the previous day. But now I want to check it for water ingress and just for general uh, put togetherness. And it's looking just fine. It's still on, as you can see from that green LED there. And there's no evidence of any water inside. And here is the new old stock SMC network card I got for it. Just to point that antenna up for better reception. And I'm going to throw in some desiccants instead of eating them. They probably won't do too much because they're pretty small. But uh, I also want to check the heat coming off the heat sink and the power supply. And both were a little bit warm, but nothing catastrophic, nothing that would be uh, unusual. I just want to show you the box for the network card that I put in there. And man, is this thing old. Its latest compatibility listing is for Windows XP. And the packaging dealie actually comes with a recess for a 10 base T BNC adapter. So, yeah, this thing is, uh, is hella old. I don't even think SMC exists anymore. But there you go. Home and small office networking. Yeah, or ridiculous projects outside for no reason. And so, uh, well, what does this computer do right now? Not a whole hell of a lot, but you can actually access it. If you go to outdoor.s.co.tt, you'll get this fancy, fancy web page which shows the CPU core temperature, which updates every minute, and the current weather in my area, which updates every hour or so from an API. And it shows it conveniently in Celsius and Fahrenheit. You can also download a CSV file of historical temperature data, and that has uh, one hour increments of both outdoor temperature and the CPU core temperature. And just to show you that it's actually up and running live, I can SSH into it. And voila, you can see the uh, temperature data right there if you want. Well, you can SSH into it, but the temperature data is there, for example. And uh, it is a functional machine, although very slow. Even top uses a significant amount of CPU once it refreshes. There you go, 10% CPU just to, uh, just to show the running processes. So wow, that is one slow-ass computer. I mean, I ran updates on it. It took over three hours just to update about 150 packages on the system. So 
it is like unusably slow. I'm probably going to eventually replace it once I use it for its eventual intended purpose. I'll probably replace it with a Raspberry Pi of some sort. But uh, for now, that's what it is. Again, you can go see it for yourself at outdoor.s.co.tt. And uh, in that regard, I've been Scott, and this has been a weird project of putting a computer outside. If you like the video, then hit the like button. If you subscribe to the video, hit the subscribe button and everything else that I've said before. Yeah, I think that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Or night. Or morning. Yeah. <laughs>